What's good, folks? Dartray19 here, and I'm just here to ask you if good for like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video to whoever you wants to see this joint, if you don't mind. That's really up to you. Alright. Enjoy the video. What good folks it's Darkdry19 and welcome back to another what if I believe this is what if Naruto was a scion part 3 so if you want another part like comment subscribe and enjoy the video chapter 4. Sasuke Uchiha began to wake feeling the back of his neck throbbing and he was in a particularly bad mood. He kept his eyes shut and didn't move sensing two people in the room with him, judging by the faint breathing he could tell they were both female, one was the person he began to hate almost as much as his brother, mostly for her total lack of loyalty to her own clan. Well that's done, Dadabane, a cheerful sounding female voice stated closer to them. Orochimaru is so sloppy, honestly using a corruption seal, with a venom based chakra boosting seal, and a subliminal mental seal, would have turned my poor godson into either a raving lunatic or a vegetable. I shouldn't be surprised though that Baka couldn't seal his way out of the Chunin exams when he was Janan according to Mito Obasan. Sasuke cracked his eye open to see who referred to him as their godchild. What he saw was arguably the most beautiful woman he ever seen in his life, the long red hair and violet colored eyes, athletic curves hidden underneath a skin tight kunoichi outfit. Her face while cheerful looked vaguely familiar, like he's seen it before. Mikoto sighed, will he be alright though? Stress from the seal and whatever corrupting effects had been placed on him are still present can't do anything about that, brain chemistry is not my forte ask Inoiki, Dadabane, the redhead stated making the Uchiha male frown slightly at the verbal tick which was remarkably similar to the one Naruto used. Most likely he is a flight risk, he got a taste of that foul crap and according to Anko, Orochimaru intended it to be addictive so the heaven's curse seal will be used. I essentially forced Sasuke to go cold turkey. I see, if Fugaku hadn't been bad enough instilling him with all the arrogance and elitist bullshit that got our clan in the wars with the Uzumaki and Senju back in Madara Uchiha's day now we got to deal with Orochimaru messing with his mind further outside of the Tsukiyomi that Itachi nailed him with before leaving, I'm surprised Lord Hokage even allowed him to be a shinobi I'm sure he's not mentally right for it, Mikado stated causing anger to rise in the Uchiha male. What do I do Kushina-chan, regardless of the circumstances I still love my sons, Mikado frowned sadly. Though I may have given him the impression that I hate him, because of his father. Kushina chuckled sadly, still tactful as ever I see, is it any wonder why I did all planning when we pulled those pranks? The Uchiha matriarch pouted turning her head, so I suck at tactics, I had Minato-kun and Tuchi for that on my team. The redhead snickered before giving the other woman a sad smile, I'm not one to give advice on raising kids, Mikito-chan. I never got to raise my Sochi, I died remember and not once since being revived have I not regretted what happened to my son. The red head had tears in her eyes. Naruto is ever right to hate Minato-kun and I, but he doesn't if anything because of the memories he absorbed through Vegeta-sama he said he understood where we were coming from, gave us both hugs, she then giggled, Sasuke raised a mental eyebrow at the mention of this Vegeta. But he did punch his father in the gut. Mikado crossed her arms over her chest looking depressed, he forgave me as well, after the third explained to him the reasons why I wasn't allowed to raise him after your deaths, the Uchiha matriarch began sniffle, H he forgave me how can anyone be that compassionate or forgiving? Kushina wiped her own tears away, I guess he inherited his grandfather's soul, my dad was always like that, I bet he forgave Kumo as he lay dying after they attacked my home village. The women held a companionable silence while Kushina went about cleaning up. Sasuke however held an even lower opinion of Naruto now than he did before. Forgiveness and compassion I knew the Dobi was weak but this just shows much. 
I'll never forgive that woman for abandoning me and father, or condoning Itachi's actions. But the Dobi's mother got rid of the seal and now I'm weak again I'll leave the village once I become Chuni. This place is for the weak anyway, all I need is to kill one of the stupid fangirls to get Mengeku Sharingan, I would kill the annoying pink haired one but I'm not strong enough to take on the Dobi right now. Speaking of which who is this Vegeta and what did he give Naruto to make him so powerful even I could feel it coming off of him in waves. You awake Gaki, Kushina lightly tapped the male Uchiha on the forehead causing him to scowl and open his eyes. Wow, really grumpy when you wake up, yeah he's definitely Fugaku kid, the woman stated in a cheerful chirp, reminding him so much of her annoying son. HN, Sasuke grunted. Okay Mikado he's all yours, the grumpy Gus, the red head pouted. Yeesh. The Uzumaki woman picked up her sealing brushes and left the room. This left an infuriated son and a chagrined mother behind one glaring and the other raising her eyes letting out a tired sigh. I hate you, Sasuke growled Sharingan activated the Tomoe spinning wildly. Mikito closed her eyes activating her own full evolved Sharingan, you are my son and I do love you regardless of whose sperm was donated to conceive. But know this Sochi, if you so much as think of running off to Orochimaru I will not hesitate to track you down and kill you, he will not get the Sharingan that is a promise. I'll make one of my own, when I'm finished with Itachi you will be next, Sasuke stated coldly. Don't start something you won't be able to finish Sochi, because I guarantee there will be a lot of obstacles that will get in your way. I don't shy away from my friends and I gladly take their help in a heartbeat, Mikido's own Tomoe's begun to spin. Don't go this route, Sochi please it only ends in tragedy for both sides. You turned your back on the clan, and were willing to raise that Dobi, that makes you both a traitor and weak. My mother died during the Uchiha massacre loyal and in her proper place. You are nothing to me, the Uchiha male explained. The corner of Mikado's eyes teared up slightly but that was all her face looked like it was chiseled from stone, I see, very well I'll leave you alone Sasuke Uchiha, seems I was mistaken on who my Sochi was, turns out he died during the massacre as well, farewell. With that the Uchiha matriarch left the room without a backwards glance however tears fell from the woman's eyes as she walked down the hall. Damn you Fugaku, I hope you're burning in whatever hell you are in. 30 flashback 2 hours before 30. Minato and Kushina were waiting in the shadows while the civilian and shinobi council members began taking their seats, what caused Minato to frown most was the amount of civilians on the civilian council it had increased by 3 since he had been Hokage, glancing over at his wife who was clenching and unclenching her hands. This meeting is called to order, Sarutobi stated puffing on his pipe, a miracle has occurred. What the demon died in the forest of death? One of the civilians stated looking hopeful only for a second then his head came off his shoulders and a fountain of blood exploded from his neck. Everyone jumped back fear evident in the civilian's eyes, Sarutobi sighed, Kushina? Said woman appeared in the light followed by her husband both glaring at the civilian council. The woman question bent down and wiped her kadachi on the corpse before sheathing the weapon. Next person uses that derogatory statement about my son again I'll fillet them alive with the dull rusty kunai. Why do Minato asked with a raised an eyebrow. Kushina smiled sweetly at her husband, because it'll hurt more Minato-kun, you silly. That's Kushi-chan alright, Tsume barked with a smirk. The question is how? Blame our son, Kushina stated with a sad smile. And before you Bakas, she glared at the majority of the civilian council who looked like they were going to protest. Get any ideas of bad-mouthing him or denying he did such a thing, the fox has been dead for 13 years. Matter of fact it died two hours after it had been sealed inside Naruto. She turned to the shinobi council. How many of you remember the huge surge of chakra that night, she then turned to civilians. How many of you ingrates felt the intense pressure in the air that night? That was the death of the fox. Mibuki tentatively raised a hand, I remember that night, it felt like everything was pushing me to the ground for a brief moment and it woke up my Sakura-chan. Troublesome, Lord Hokage why weren't we informed or why didn't you have Inoki do a mind walk? Shikaku Nara asked. They all heard a meaty smack as the old Hokage slapped himself on the forehead. The old man went senile for 13 years, Kushina snorted crossing her arms glaring at the old Hokage. Sarutobi nodded sadly, I should have then Naruto would have never endured the hardship he did. Your lucky Vegeta Sama stated all the physical abuse Sochi endured gave him what is called a Zenkai boost, Minato explained. What would that be? Choza asked. For every assault Naruto endured or near-death experience he had, when he recovered actually made him stronger. If the academy hadn't sabotaged his shinobi training he would have been on par with me after his second year of the academy, Minato explained causing the civilian both internally sigh in relief and cringe in fear, as most realized they were actively helping the demon get stronger. 
Homer leaned forward, this isn't the point of this meeting, but I see the real point and it's null and void anyway none of us on the Shinobi Council will deny who you are Minato, Kashina simply too much evidence on hand to say otherwise. My question is what happens now, will you retake the mantle of Hokage, Minato? Not so sure I want to, the blonde former Hokage states, I entrusted my son to the village to be raised with love and affection, all he got was mental abuse and scorn on good days, with assaults and assassination attempts on bad days. I'll need a lot of convincing. The civilian council glanced at each other looking desperate mostly because they knew that for their beloved fourth to retake his position it would involve the demon in some way. Mibuki however snorted in disgust at her fellow council members, she harbored nothing but sadness at her inability to protect Naruto, she had even been disappointed with her daughter's actions against the orange-haired boy. What would you like, Minato-sama? She asked aloud getting glares from her fellow council members. Public apologies would be nice for a start then we work on restitution for my son, and finally the civilian council removes two more people from this governing body I don't how there are 12 civilians and 10 shinobi council members, there should only be the clan heads with the two advisors for the shinobi side, and 10 civilians 8 representing the civilians branches 3 for trade, 3 for commerce, and 3 for health and well-being, with Donzo as civilian advisor where did the other two come from, Minato asked. We represent the voice of the daimyo, the fat female representative haughtily. In other words these are false titles no brought in by Donzo to try and undermine the Hokage by forcing to compromise too much, no doubt to protect Naruto, Minato sighed heavily crossing his arms glancing at Kushina who was glaring at Donzo. I will take back the mantle of Hokage. What if we don't want you back? Asked one of the more quieter council members. Mikado frowned noting his voice was off, she activated her Sharingan and looked around the room. Hyashi can you activate your Byakugan I can see chakra distortions in the room but can't pinpoint them. What are you doing we made a rules about this, the fat woman stated glaring at the Uchiha. Who are you anyway? Mikado Uchiha, the female Uchiha smirked at the shock in civilian faces. No I did not die with my stupid power hungry clan that was a blood clone. Hyashi your Byakugan please? A faint nod he activated his own Keki Genkai and what he saw shocked him, Donzo, he growled glaring at the man, what have you done? Before the old man could react several chakra chains encircled him preventing him from moving. The man grunted glaring at the source, so it's true you have one of the sage of the six paths gifts Kashina. The Uzumaki, the Senju, and the Uchiha are all distantly related to him Danzo so it shouldn't surprise you. Now what do you see Yashi? Kushina asked. Sharingan implanted all up and down his left arm, and one in his left eye, the Hyuga clan head stated in anger and disgust. Mikado's own eyes narrowing in rage as they morphed into her Mengeku Sharingan surprising everyone. How dare you, I may despise my clan's arrogance and elitist attitude but to have my son murder them to stop a coup d'etat and for you to swoop in and take what is not yours, a second later a flash of pitch black flames ignited Donzo who screamed. Fai! This caused everyone near the old warhawk to jump back in fright. Kushina dropped her chains then ran over pulling out a seal tag the moment it came in contact with the flames and burning corpse they vanished. Hum didn't tell us you had that Miko-chan, Kushina pouted. Mikado winced as blood leaked from the corner of her right as she closed it taking out a rag, it was activated when Lord Third told me of your death Kushi-chan, the grief of losing my two best friends was too much for me. Sarutobi sighed heavily putting his hands under his chin closing his eyes thinking once his thoughts began to sort however he smirked, with both councils possibly being compromised on motion that it should be disbanded until evaluations are done on the mental competency of said council this will be my last act as Hokage. And as my first act is returning Hokage I'm putting the motion forward immediately, you will all report to Iviki in the morning, Minato smirks at Inoiki who groans. Yes even you Yamanaka, your old boss is perfectly suited for this. Only few civilians complained this time mostly because they all felt utterly confused even Mebuki who wondered if her own thoughts had been invaded. She stood up and walked over to Kushina, I apologize to you Kushina-sama I tried to curb my daughter's abuses on your son. Kushina simply giggled and waved it off, Please if I had a chance to raise Naruto, he would have gotten a lot more lumps on his head for being a baka than the ones your daughter gave him. If anything I'm going to be thanking her, she kept him in line. According to Vegeta-sama she reminded him of his own wife and knows she'll be good for him. Mebuki smiled faintly, I'm glad there is no animosity towards my daughter Kushina-sama. Kushina put an arm around the blonde woman smirking, May, water under the bridge Mebuki-chan, Dada Bane. Besides if my son has his way will be in-laws by the time he turns 16. Mebuki nodded and sighed. Rather it be your son than Mikado-sama's he strikes me as unstable. Waka, Kushina muttered thinking of her godson. 
Patting the blonde woman's shoulder she walked over to Mikado ushering the Uchiha matriarch out of the council chambers. Minato-kun see you at home, I'm going to take Miko-chan out to get her drunk I better see you in your boxers when we get home. Mikado blinked, what are you doing Kushina? You need a drink to get your mind of what you just did, and you need a threesome to unwind and I'm more than willing to share, not a bane, Kushina giggled watching Mikado's nose explode in a fountain of blood. Still perving on my husband, Miko-chan. Um, Kushina? Minato asked looking uncertain. What is this all about? The redhead rubbed the back of her head much like what her son did, there's too much drama Minato-kun, plus with how things have been since we got revived. I want to help my best female friend find some comfort, not a bane. But a threesome? Mikado asked blushing. We're not part of Jiraiya Sensei's pervy books, Kushi-chan. May, details I want hot steamy sex with my husband and best friend besides we're still kind of the last of our lines Miko-chan. Atachi is off doing whatever I doubt he's sowing his wild oats and as far as I know Sasuke is either going to get himself killed or is gay so no help for you on that front. We're both still young and I love to give my son a baby brother or sister, she leaned biting Mikado's ear gently while whispering. And I bet you still have that fantasy about me and Minato-kun, don't you, Dada Bane? Minato sighed shaking his head, he knew he couldn't argue with his wife regardless of how sudden this all was. When did this start? He muttered to himself. Three words Minato-kun, Clan Restoration Act, Kushina stated with a shrug. Naruto-kun falls under it, Miko-chan falls under it, I fall under it. After a few seconds Minato nodded, I thought you and Mikado already fulfilled that, both of you have male heirs. True but in Miko-chan's case her heirs aren't viable, one is borderline unstable and the other is listed as a rogue nin. While I have an heir to the Uzumaki clan I want to give you one for your clan, Minato-kun, the redhead side heavily. Bad and I can't raise Naruto anymore he grew up without us, I love him with all my heart but he doesn't really need us. I feel like we're just in the way. I'm sure he doesn't think that, Mikado stated. He'll probably even think us invading his life will at first feel like a luxury to him, caring about his every little moment, like leaving the house, cooking for him, making sure he dresses right, asking him to be safe on missions, Minato explained. Alright I get it, and that is only one motivation for the CRA, the other is I want my best friend to be happy. Fugaku was a great A asshole and wherever he is I'm hoping some demon spawn is raping him right now. So what I'm saying is, Kushina paused looping an arm around Mikito looking up at her husband. I want Miko-chan to be my sister wife Minato-kun. Minato knew he wouldn't win this argument matter of fact the only argument he did win backfired on him, he turned to his longtime teammate on Team Jiraiya, he had to admit in terms of beauty Mikito was on par with Kushina, he had always thought so just Kushina had always been number one in his mind. Still with Mikito no longer burdened by the Uchiha elders it was solely up to her now. This is something you'll have to decide Mikito. I can't win an argument with Kushina to save my life and the one I did win made things worse. The redhead was torn between smirking and looking depressed which made her expressions the Uchiha matriarch thought kind of funny. Allow me to wait and make a decision until after I talk with Sasuke again I want to clear the air between us if he'll let me. Take as much time as you need, Minato smiled before a tick marked appeared above his right eye. How long have you been there Jiraiya sensei? The two women turned to see the perverted toad sage crouched on the window seal scribbling away in his research book. Judging by the amount of notes he's taking and the trickle of blood on his lip I'd say since I made the threesome comment, Kushina sighed shaking her head then began cracking her knuckles in preparation to dish out punishment. It's been a long time pervy sage let's see if I can remember the art of putting you in traction, not a bane. Mikito followed her Sharingan spinning wildly. Yes it has been a while hasn't it pervy sensei time to scream like a girl, she smiled overly sweetly. Crap, the toad sage muttered stuffing his research book into his jacket before leaping from the window. Come back here and take your licks like a man. Kushina growled leaping from the window Mikado following her. Minato sighed, glad someone hasn't changed much, as several Anbu in the council room chuckled. 30 and flashback 30. Mikado walked quietly into the room she designated herself to and felt two gentle hands on her shoulders looking up Kushina gave her a sad smile gently pulling her into an embrace. The Uchiha matriarch promptly let all her built-up angst and frustration pour out into deep racking sobs burying her head into her best friend's shoulder. Too far gone? Kushina whispered getting a faint nod. I'm sorry Miko-chan I had hoped he'd be like Sochi. Mikado took a few seconds to gather her breath wiping her eyes angrily, he's too much like his father. I even suspect he'll ignore my warning. First moment he gets he'll go looking for Orochimaru, she replied sadly. Would he be different if I actually raised him? I don't know like I said before I'm not the best person to ask about raising kids Miko-chan I one shot at it to date and I died on him, 
Your chance to raise him was shot down by circumstance but look at how well Itachi turned out for the most part being raised by you for 7 years granted he's been branded a traitor for doing something for the good of the village but still he turned out pretty well outside that, Kashina explained. I take it Minato-kun can't officially remove Itachi's missing nin status, the Uchiha woman asked. No he's spying on the Sakatsuki group and if they found out might put him in danger however the hunter nins have been called off except for two and they've been told only to appear like they are hunting him to alleviate suspicion. You know one of Pervy Sage's backup plans, the redhead explained. Mikita walked over and sat gingerly emotionally she knew she was a mess, her son disowning her. Must be nice to have a son that loves you even after all the shit that's come to light. Remarkable is more like it, Kushina said sitting next to her friend putting arm around her again. I was being serious Miko-chan earlier, I want you to with me and Minato-kun. Would it be so bad to get Naruto's approval first I already lost my son in all intents and purposes, I really don't want to alienate my godson too, the dark-haired woman stated. Yeah be a good idea, hopefully I won't be as awkward this time, Kushina giggled slightly. Of course if he's making out with that pink-haired girl we might have to wait. Chapter 5 Kushina and Mikito were wandering toward the barrack area where the tuning examinees would rest until the end of the second round. They both heard soft conversation coming from one of the rooms and stopped. 30 flashback an hour earlier 30. Sakura stood at the entrance to the medical wing dormitories, about to go in to see if her crush was alright. Opening the door her heart froze in fear, the look of unbridled hatred coming from Sasuke made her step back. What do you want? The Uchiha male asked in laced venom. I I just w wanted to s see if you were okay, Sasuke-kun, the rosette-haired girl replied nervously suddenly feeling like this was a bad idea. Okay, Sasuke drawled out. I am anything but okay, I find out I have not one but two traitors to my clan. That bitch Mikado and my brother, the power I was given robbed from me by the Dobi's fucking mother. Sasuke stood up stalking toward the girl Sharingan active and spinning wildly. Now I have a fucking little whore like you asking stupid questions, I'll show you how okay I am, before Sakura could react Sasuke lunged at her and wrapped his hands around her throat. I should have done this before, this village no longer deserves the Uchiha's bloodline, he growled and squeezing. Sakura tried to pry his hands away from her throat but his anger and increasing insanity made him far too strong. Naruto help. As tears began to flow from her eyes Sakura felt both betrayal and heartbreak that her longtime crush was actively trying to kill her. A second later Sasuke's hands became limp and he slumped backward feeling weak the rosette haired girl was about to fall forward onto the bastard only for two warm arms catch her and embrace her. Not going to say it, but I think you got the gist of it. Aichi tried to k kill me. Sakura sobbed out turning around and burying her face into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto glared down at the unconscious Uchiha, he couldn't do anything about him until after the exams as much as he would like to. One there were no witnesses and regardless of the fact his father was now the Hokage again he doubted he could justify killing the asshole for trying to kill his mate yet. He gently rubbed Sakura's back trying to soothe her before picking her up bridal style to carry her away. Like I said he doesn't deserve you, Sakura-chan, whispered in her ear kissing her forehead. I always wanted to do that, he chuckled faintly feeling her tense slightly. You okay? Sakura's emotional distress seemed to magnify with Naruto's last statement, the image of a kind-looking Sasuke stating her wildest dreams and then overlaying them with a possible hench Naruto. Remnants of her broken heart shattered completely at the realization that Sasuke had never said those words that it had been Naruto and a henge all this time. Her sobs increased in tempo her image of the Uchiha permanently destroyed. Before she could wallow in any more grief and sadness she felt Naruto sit down on a bed in one of the barracks, gently reach up caressing her cheek. Opening her eyes seeing the unconditional love in the orange-haired Scion's eyes the sobbing had subsided into sniffles as he held her gaze. And Naruto. I said it in the forest you are my Sakura, I will not let anyone hurt you physically and I will always be here to punish those who do hurt you, that is my promise of a lifetime, the orange-haired Scion stated leaning in and capturing her lips in a kiss. After a long bout of tender kisses he could sense through her energy that her melancholy was lifting ever so slightly. H how can you care so much about me after all the stuff I did to you in the academy all the violent turndowns, I treated you worse than Sasuke treated me, and you still want me, why? Sakura asked. Naruto smirked, cause you're feisty, you're not submissive. Being submissive while nice can be on occasions enabling. I am a prince of the village and I need someone who can smack me down when I'm being a baka, Let's face it Sakura-chan there are going to be times when I can be a real baka. Sakura giggled sliding her arms around his neck, I suppose that's true, but um, what about Hinata you have to know she has had a crush on you since she was 5, she stated looking worried. I know that now, Naruto sighed looking a bit guilty, 
Though before I didn't I always thought she had some sort of chronic fainting disease or something, I didn't realize I was the cause. What are you going to do about it? Sakura asked again worried. The orange-haired scion let a slow sigh. How much do you know about the Uzumaki clan or the Namikaze clan? Um, the first Hokage married a woman named Mito Uzumaki didn't he? But that's it, the rosette replied. Yeah gave birth to a son whose wife had Tsunade and Nawaki, making both my cousins, Naruto explained. Now let me explain to you what happened in the forest after Orochimaru hit me with the five-prong seal. And he did including his life before they became teammates by the end of it, Sakura was in tears both in joy and sadness, joy at Naruto having his parents back, secretly thanking Vegeta for his surprising kindness and her tears of sadness at how Naruto's life had been for 13 years her own abuse contributing to his misery. Naruto wiped her tears away with his thumbs. With all this being said, I probably fall under the CRA sure my mom will probably want to give me a brother or sister but that would only two Uzumaki and Namikaze heirs need at least four or more to make a viable restoration of a clan, I think. Sakura shook her head, it's no less than six no more than eight I remember the chapter on it in the academy. The last clan that needed it was Shino's clan his great grandfather had three wives if I recall, same with his great grand uncle, they struggled at first mostly because of the Kikai insects, she shuddered. Girls don't like bugs as a general rule unless they were raised around them. Naruto felt the rosette shift slightly sliding off his lap moving to simply sit next to him. Do you want to try being a couple, maybe bring Hinata in? Looking up into his eyes before nodding silently her feeling a lot of the emotional weight had lifted from her shoulders. How would you approach her? She's the heiress of her clan, Sakura-chan she's probably known about the CRA since she was four. While I don't want to exploit her submissive nature, it may come into play, Naruto sighed. Then there's her confidence issues, that needs to be addressed and I know most of it stems from her clan's elders. Sakura nods, she should be in the tower by now. Naruto stood up extending his hand which Sakura took and they set off to find Hinata and her team. Didn't take long they found them two rooms over talking to their sensei. Yo, Naruto up his hand in greeting. And Naruto-kun, Hinata blushed, Kurenai turned along with Kiba and Shino. Hey Kurenai-sensei can Sakura-chan and I borrow, Hinata-chan for a moment? The orange-haired scion asked. Hinata blushed images appearing in her mind, yes, please borrow me Naruto-kun. Kurenai smiled faintly nodding as Naruto walked up taking the girl by the hand and leading her out her face scarlet, Sakura just shook her head following the two. What was that all about? Kiba asked then glanced down hearing Akamaru whimper. What's with you? 30 and flashback 30. Kushina giggled hearing her Sochi talking apparently to the Hyuga heiress, she glanced inside and what she saw caused her to raise an eyebrow. What? Came Mikoto's question. Sochi may be ahead of the curve Miko-chan, the redhead gestured to the crack door. Mikoto peeked in and saw Naruto talking to the Hyuga heiress while councilwoman Haruno's daughter who was sitting next to the heiress, whose face was getting redder with each passing moment before she passed out. 30. Naruto sighed looking at the fainted Hinata, she took it pretty well, don't Cha think, he chuckled. Having first apologized to her for not realizing she liked him, she then stuttered out that it was okay. He then explained to her what he explained to Sakura about what happened in the forest and what will likely happen once the second exam was done. Finally he brought up the clan restoration act and asked her if she wanted to join Sakura in trying to be a couple, that is when she promptly fainted. Sakura shook her head ruefully, just about how she takes everything regarding you. I can't believe I didn't see it before, Naruto sighed rubbing his head before shifting. Not nice to spy on me, Kasan, he smirked. Hee hee, Kushina and Mikido walked into the room one looking unrepentant with a huge smirk on her face while the other held a healthy blush at being caught. So a step ahead of the game, Sochi? More or less, he glanced at Sakura whose eyes and mouth were wide in shock. Sakura? Sakura shook her head pointing at Kushina, T that's your Kasan? Yeah, that's me, Kushina chirped rubbing the back of her head. You're Sakura huh? The woman stepped up close and leaned forward examining her potential daughter-in-law the very one her son had such praise for hearing the scary similar background they shared. A little out of shape but nothing some good hard training can't overcome for the both of them, she stated seeing Hinata waking up. I'm sure they'll make excellent additions to the clan, Naruto-kun. The orange-haired scion smiled, how are you Mikado Obasan? Mikado teared up, I haven't been a very good godmother Naruto-kun and I was a terrible mother to Sasuke and Itachi. I abandoned them because of their father, instead of bringing them with me like I should have I left a blood clone to raise them. You um, W what's a a blood clone? Hinata asked. It is a clone created using chakra and a pint of person's blood, 
The blood sustains the chakra preventing it from dissipating and it lasts two days after it dies, it has the same overall properties as the shadow clone in that it retains information after it dies, Kushina explained. It also is one of Mikado's personally created jutsus. That's awesome Mikado Obasan, can you teach me that? Naruto asked looking eager. The Uchiha woman smiled faintly, I might, there is one thing I need to ask you if Kushi-chan doesn't interrupt. Kushina pouted but nodded. W would you object if I entered into a relationship with your father? Naruto crossed his arms in mock thought, before snorting, I'd be a hypocrite if I did Mikado Obasan. I just asked both Sakura-chan and Hinata-chan if they wanted to be in a relationship with me. He smirked hearing Hinata eat glancing at said girl whose face was bright red. Kushina giggled, now I know why I recognized her, she's Hitomi's daughter right? Snapping her fingers looking at Mikato. Yes, Hitomi and Hyashi had Hinata shortly after you died, Mikato explained. The redhead giggled, she was so much fun growing up, thought Bane. Sighing Mikado turned to Hinata who looked confused, Kushina loved to tease your mother to the point of her passing out from blood loss from it either rushing to her face or coming out of her nose after one of Kushi Chan Lud comments. It broke her out of her shyness, Kushina stated with a pout. Poor girl needed it could you imagine her wedding night with Yashi if she kept fainting talk about total disaster, Dada Bane. Hinata eeped again then perverted Hinata appeared. Ride Naruto-kun while watching Sakura-chan squirm on his face, hmm yes. Or better yet kiss Sakura-chan while she's underneath us, Naruto takes us both. Hinata's nose was bleeding causing Kushina to raise an eyebrow shaking her head. The Hyuga heiress blushed again pushing her index fingers together, T thank you Kushina-sama, F for A accepting me. Kushina smiled sadly, I had nothing to do with it, this is all Naruto I wasn't able to raise him like I dreamed of, I died on him. As much as he has forgiven me and his father I still feel like I failed him. The orange-haired scion put his arms around his mother, never you weren't separated from me by choice you were stolen from me by whoever that masked Uchiha was. And whoever he was I'm going to slaughter him if I ever see him, Dadabayo. The other three females all smiled at this exchange, my Sochi is awesome, Kushina smiled giving the other girls a thumbs up. 30 Capsule Corporation age 77930. Bulma was currently fitting the screen to her new device wiping her brow, Vegeta do you have a minute I have something to show you. What is it, I'm training. Came the irritated question. Just come up to my workshop, Ibaka. Bulma growled. The Prince of Scions often wondered why he fell in love with the infuriating woman he could only begin to guess. Walking from his gravity trainer to the workshop had him past the main living area where his son was busy with his recent fling of the month, snorting in disgust. As much as I find Kakarot's eldest Gaki to be a wimp at least he settle on a mate, Trunks is more his mother than he is me what a waste. He snarled opening the door to the workshop watching his wife tinker with some communication device. What is it? Bulma turned cleaning up the smudge on her cheek, I finally figured it out, I made an interdimensional communicator. Looking confused Vegeta crossed his arms, explain in a language I can understand. Bulma grunted, fine. Basically with this thing we can give this to the boy you gave your powers to and keep tabs on him Nubaka. All we need is Goku to use his instant transmission and go there to give it to the boy. Why didn't you say so? Vegeta growled. I just did. The blue haired woman snapped back. ARGH. Vegeta stepped up and looked at the device smirking slightly, he loved it when Bulma got angry it made her really sexy and turned him on. Interesting, he walked over and locked the door before turning back to his wife. I'll go look for Kakarot tomorrow. Why not today? Bulma asked. I have something else in mind, Vegeta walked up to her. Bulma had seen that look before on her birthday after the fight with Beerus, oh it was my prince in the mood, she gave him a saucy smile. Do you need to ask, the prince stated causing the woman to giggle. Chapter 6 Three Hidden Range Anon, the Rookie Nine, Team Guy, the Sans Siblings, and Kabuto's team stood in the center of a large arena staring up at three shinobi many have never seen before. The first standing to the right caused Sasuke to glare heatedly at, was a fairly beautiful woman with shoulder-length black hair, dressed in Jonin attire only instead of wearing just the Uchiha as she did before on the back of her flak jacket it was replaced with a new elaborate insignia, the Uzumaki swirl, with four lightning bolts striking inward toward the Uchiha fan, the bolts representing the Namikaze clan signifying her recent addition into the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans while still holding true to her Uchiha blood. On the left was a woman with unparalleled beauty dressed in a red-skinned tight kunoichi stocking, shoulder harness, and wielding two kadachi the Uzumaki and Namikaze mixed insignias on her back and shoulders she got a welcome smile from her son and his two girlfriends. The one in the middle however gave a certain disguised signing pause and fear, 
He wore a Jonin outfit, with a long white sleeveless cloak with red flames on the bottom and the word fourth written along the back. Who the heck is that? Came keep a question. Where's the third Hokage? He re-entered retirement a lot of things have happened in the last five days that you probably haven't been made aware of, I guess it is a considered a miracle to summon a curse from the heavens to others. My name is Minato Namikaze 13 years ago I died sealing the nine-tailed bijou into my son, most of you even know him Minato paused chuckling. Hell I've been told he looks a lot like me, just has his mother's chin and cute little nose. Bakatazan. Naruto growled thrusting his fist out at his father. Everyone turned to the whiskered Mark Orange haired Scion the rookie 9 and teen guy minus Sakura, Sasuke, and Hinata looked on in shock. W wait how are you alive A and I is Naruto really your son? Ino asked nervously having been told on numerous occasions by her parents in the past not to pick on Naruto but ignore them because everyone else was doing it. To answer your first question Ms Yamanaka I'm afraid that is classified. To answer the second yes, Naruto is indeed my son, Minato explained. As for the nine tails due to circumstances I didn't even know had occurred I inadvertently sealed someone in with the fox and this person for all intents and purposes obliterated the nine tails. That can't be possible to kill a bijou you'd have practically destroy the planet, no one on this earth has that power, Baki stated. The person I sealed into Naruto wasn't from this earth he was pulled into our world through some sort of time-space jutsu, Minato stated with a sigh not sure why he would reveal such things but he felt Naruto's friends needed to know he wasn't a threat to them. The fox is dead and has been for 13 years. What of the person that killed the fox is he still sealed inside Naruto? Shino asked. A very perceptive person you are Shino. No the man died and was resurrected in the same way my wife and I were. Minato smirked internally purposely leaving out the fact that his son got all the bijou slaying power when the man died. Minato-kun, let's get on with the closing speech thingy, Kushina pouted. The blonde Hokage sighed shaking his head. Not time yet Kushi-chan I count 21 bodies, that needs to go down unless there are people willing to drop out, Kabuto was the sole person to do so, leaving 20 left. Okay Hayate, looks like you're up. Cough understood Hokage-sama, a man walked up looking a little worse for wear bags under his eyes, and a pale waxy complexion. To thin the numbers we will be having a preliminary one-on-one -on -one tournament, hopefully to get the number down to 10 or less. 30. Arushimaru stood in the shadows seething as Kabuto appeared, our plans will need to change, there is no way the invasion will succeed, Suna will likely pull out now out of fear. Yes, the fourth Hokage being resurrected in some way and within the last five days, I don't understand how that is possible. Kabuto stated looking confused. The snake signing frown going through the events in the last week that could have caused such a drastic change in events he then remembered during his little meeting with Anko he felt something akin to compressed killer intent centered around where he left Sasuke and his teammates, with the recent revelation that the fox had been killed and the only thing sealed in the Jinchuriki was an unknown male with the power to kill a bijou, left him with only one theory. When he slapped the five-prong seal on the Namikaze Gaki he started the chain of events or hastened them. Unless it's a ploy of Sarutobi senseis in some way do I take the chance, the signing thought a moment, we alter it slightly and form our forces to proceed with caution, and I want Tuya to stay behind. Little did Orochimaru know that Karen Uzumaki and Kintsuchi were currently spilling what they knew about Orochimaru's operation and invasion plans without even being coaxed, both having concern for their shared friend, one having been rescued from a beating and possible rape and the other finding out she had family in Konoha. 30. Shino watched as his opponent dropped looking like he was wasting away, your genjutsu failed, why because my kikai insects detected the illusion and negated them while you stood back confidently they snuck in behind you and began eating away your chakra. In the future you will learn not to assume anything. Winner of the match Shino Aburame, Hayate stated as medic Nin appeared to help the Ame Janan as said Janan passed out. Naruto looked on board out of his mind, everything seemed to move almost in slow motion for him. During each match he could easily find 60 different holes in each person's fighting style. Sasuke's he could see he left his back far too open. 1010 was entirely too weapon based any decent long range jutsu could cripple her and did as Tamari systematically destroyed her, with her wind based jutsu. Shikamaru was probably the only one he couldn't really get a read on but that was because the lazy genius ended the match quickly. The puppet user relied way too much on his dolls and probably sucked royally with taijutsu. Sakura as much as he loved her. The academy taijutsu just didn't suit her it made her look awkward, she needed something a little more up close and personal. He had been teaching her how to bring out her key but barely three days of instruction was not enough so she and Ino ended up in a draw for their match, but mostly it was Sakura apologizing to Ino for ruining their friendship over someone not worth their time. Alright, look at that Akamaru we got a breeze fight, 
Kiba stated ignoring his companion whimpering. Naruto glanced at the sign and smirked jumping up to the railing then jumping down. He walked into the center of the room next to the proctor crossing his arms waiting for Kiba who was having trouble with Akamaru. What's wrong with you this'll be easy, I don't care if he's the son of the fourth Hokage. He's still a dobi. Naruto snorted glancing up at Kiba, maybe you should leave your master alone Kiba it's obvious he doesn't want to fight. Kiba growled jumping down, oh that is it I'm going to wipe the floor with you dobi. Doubtful, looking up at the Akamaru Naruto smirked again, you should have your pet trained more Akamaru he's getting quite rabid, maybe someone should knock him down a few pegs. Well since I'm here I'll volunteer, but know this Kiba you'll never lay a hand on me. Kiba scoffed, fine then I guess I'll use my feet. The wild looking team dropped into his family's taijutsu stance while Naruto hadn't moved an inch arm still crossed over his chest watching Kiba with a bored expression. GGGRRRR. Kiba charged forward. Fang over fang. His body moving in a horizontal tornado toward Naruto everyone gasped as Kiba seemed to go right through the orange haired scion. When the wild looking boy skid to a halt he looking worried afraid he accidentally killed Naruto only to turn and see Naruto hadn't moved and completely unscathed. WW would I hit you? Strike one, Kiba. I'll give you two more chances to hit me and then you're out, the whisker mark scion stated. Growling in anger he performed another fang over fang skidding to a halt and turning around he saw again that Naruto was not only unharmed but he actually yawned. Is that it I must say Kiba this is beginning to bore me. The Inuzuka heir was beside himself with rage and a small amount of fear he hit Naruto his best jutsu twice and nothing happened. Running forward this time Kiba launched into a series of strikes and kicks none of which connected. How, is, this, possible? Kiba gasped taking two steps back. Naruto shrugged, simply you're too weak to challenge me and that was strike three by the way, reaching up with his index finger and appeared to lightly tap Kiba on the forehead. The tap sent Kiba flying into the far wall after he slumped to the ground Hayate ran over to checking him. He's alright, I held back a lot, most he'll have will be a few cracked ribs and maybe a concussion. 30. Naruto quietly jumped back up to the railing landing next to Kurunai and her students. Sorry, Kiba kind of set me off. I it's okay and Naruto-kun, Hinata replied giving him a shy smile, while Shino simply grunted adjusting his sunglasses. With a slight shake of his head Naruto stepped closer to Hinata who blushed lightly, you got such a pretty voice Hinata-chan, need to work on not stuttering, he smiled softly causing the girl to turn redder if that was possible. Before she could say anything Naruto brought her in and gave her a gentle kiss. And Naruto-kun kissed me, H he kissed me, Hinata swooned before falling forward into Naruto's arms. Sakura sighed, really need to break her of that. Yep, wedding night will get really boring if she keeps passing out after every kiss, Naruto chuckles. Sakura snorts, what about each article of clothing she'll have to remove? Hinata woke up long enough to hear them say that before she fell backward with from a nosebleed, oh Naruto-kun, she whispered. Hinata-chan, Naruto shook his head a smile still on his face then turned to Sakura, might have to help her in the clothing removal department, Sakura-chan. Rolling her eyes Sakura gently fanned the Hyuga heiress, oh no, she whispered dread in her voice. Hinata slowly woke to see her name and the last person she wanted to face. Neji Nisan, Hinata whispered nervously. Watching the glare Hinata was getting from her cousin Naruto stepped forward gently putting his hands on her shoulders kissing her forehead, win or lose Hinata-chan prove to him that you are not weak. The Hyuga heiress nodded her face set with determination she walked down the stairs walking up and standing across from her cousin. You are fated to lose here Hinata, Neji sneered. Neji Nisan, shut up, Hinata stated in a surprisingly cool tone sliding into her gentle fist stance. Neji scowled sliding into his stance, fine it seems you'll need to be re-educated in learning your place, Hinata. One simple gesture would be all I need to end the fight Neji Nisan you know that. But you also know I'll never use it cannot bear to cause you or any other branch member pain, as one of Naruto-kun's betrothed I can ask the Uzumaki clan to find a way to negate the pain-inducing aspects of the caged bird seal and have every member of the clan use it as it was intended to be used, Hinata explained as both she and Neji went into a series of strikes and near misses. You are deluded, the main branch will never accept it, Neji replied. 30. Watching the fight from a distance Naruto had to admire the forms however he noted Hinata had trouble with it, the ridged form seemed to hamper her natural flexibility. With a sigh, she's losing, her form is just too choppy she overextends her arms when she needs to spin and kick, a frown formed. And what makes you an expert on taijutsu forms, Dobi, Sasuke scoffed. Funny you should taunt, wuss, Naruto stated causing the male Uchiha to grow. That guy who killed the bijou he gave me all his skills and experiences before he died and was revived, 
that included all his knowledge in various combat styles. So shut up, I wasn't talking to you, team I was talking to Kakashi Sensei and Sakura-chan. Sasuke seethed to himself clenching and unclenching his hands, how strong did the dobi become and where can I get that strength? 30 Sun Residence Age 779 30 Vegeta landed outside Goku home looking around he noted that it was far bigger than it had been before Videl had entered Gohan's life. With her married into the family the Sun homestead had expanded to include a bigger main house, an apartment for Goten, and a small library and office for Gohan to do whatever research that intrigued him. He came to the entrance to the main house and heard Kakarot's woman growling. Looking through the door he saw the woman cleaning like she was in a war. Entering the house he watched her and noticed how tense she was, what is wrong with you? He asked aloud. Chi Chi spun around clutching her duster holding it like a sword, she blinked a moment before she sighed, just cleaning. Sounded more like you were trying to kill your floor, Vegeta snorted. I'm looking for Kakarot. Out, past the radish field, he's training Goten again, Chi Chi stated mournfully walking over and sitting at her dining table. Uptight, moody, and I heard longing I wonder how long it has been since Kakarot mated with her. Vegeta left the house lifting off lazily floating over the radish field having a fond memory of it, drawing radishes to determine who would fight two of Frieza's leftovers. Beyond was a large canyon where he spotted two dots below sparring and wrecking the surrounding the area. Landing just as Goku finished a combo sending Goten flying, Kakarot. Goku fell out of his stance, oh hey Vegeta, what's up? I've come to ask you to use your instant transmission to get me to that shinobi world I died in, Vegeta stated. Um, I need to see it first before I can go there, Goku explained. Blast it, Vegeta softly growled, a part of him the more caring part that Bulma helped cultivate and meeting the orange-haired boy helped solidify though he would go to his grave to deny wanting to protect said boy, granted the boy probably didn't need any protection in his world as the strongest being he could sense from inside the boy matched that of Zarbon in his transformed state, which was someone Naruto could easily handle. Still the Scion Prince felt he needed to protect one of his subjects. Thinking quickly through his options maybe talking to one of the Kais. Which of the four Kais runs that realm, Kakara? Hmm, if it's alternate universe I suppose we'd have to talk the Supreme Kai of Space, she's the sister of the Supreme Kai of Time, and not nearly as cheerful, Goku explained while he was portrayed as a dimwit most of the time, Goku had a fairly decent education during his time in other world on the ways and means of what the Kais protected and just how many there were. He was even offered the job of Supreme Kai from Kibito Kai, seeing as how Goku was already doing that job protecting his realm. Goku wanted to wait until he died of natural causes before he take the job, that way he know Chi Chi would be with him in other world which was his other stipulation. Kibito Kai agreed to it. Um, couldn't we use the Dragon Balls? The Scion Prince smacked himself in the head grunting at the pain, Bulma has them at the house, another one of her bingo tournaments she holding for Trunks's birthday this year. Oh yeah, hey, just hope the God of Destruction is still sleeping this time. I'm still not strong enough to beat him, Goku pouted slightly. Only you would train for a rematch against a god, Vegeta snorted. Aside from that, your woman looks tense Kakarot, as both he and Goku took to the air unseen signal from them both to begin flying toward capsule core. Goku waved to Goten who waved back lifting off to head back home. When was the last you mated with her? Goku blushed slightly then started to think, um, he paused in his thoughts. If you're thinking about it, then you clearly don't mate enough with her no wonder she's uptight, Vegeta rolled his eyes. Um, how many times with Bulma, Goku asked. At least twice a week or more depending on her mood, the Scion Prince explained. And she's always in the mood, it wouldn't surprise me if your woman is taking to using her laundry chores to satisfy herself. Goku looked a little chagrin he had been so focused on training to fight the next big threat that would appear he'd been neglecting his husbandly duties, the fact that Vegeta had pointed it out made him feel worse. Right, when we finish making sure this Naruto is good I'll go home and make up for lost time. Vegeta grinned slightly, you're welcome, Kakarot. Rubbing the back of his head the naive hero chuckled weakly, so what are you going to use your second wish for? I don't know, Vegeta hadn't really thought about it he had hoped that wouldn't have needed the Dragon Balls. Maybe you know wish for Bulma, Videl, and Chi Chi to become scions or something, the naive hero stated casually scratching his chin in thought. The Scion Prince came to an abrupt halt floating in the air eyes the size of saucers before he groaned slumping his shoulders. Now I feel like a real Baka, the amount of times we wished using the Dragon Balls and that has never occurred to me, only for this naive man child to figure it out is infuriating. Not dignifying an answer Vegeta launched forward Goku quietly following with a completely clueless expression on his face. 30. Bulma placed the Dragon Balls in the center of her backyard and stood back, well Vegeta they're all yours.
The Scion Prince stepped forward looking down at the seven balls that at one time he wanted to make the wish for immortality with. Now some 15 years later he was presented with them free to make any wish he chose and the thought of immortality was in the back of his mind. What good is immortality without Bulma, if I gave her the same she'd grow into despair after losing her friends and our son to the ravages of age. I have found something much more long-lasting than merely being able to live forever. I'm satisfied with how things turned out. Come forth Shenron and grant my two wishes. The sky darkened and lightning danced across the sky before a massive form shot from the seven balls taking the shape of a coiled dragon who stared down. What wishes may I grant so I can leave? Two years ago Perunga revived two souls and sent them back to their realm I would like Kakarot and I to go to this realm, is this possible? Vegeta asked. It can be done, what is your second wish? The massive dragon asked. That all scions with mates be turned into scions if that is possible. Vegeta question. The ones known as Bulma? Chi Chi, Videl, Sakura, and Hinata can be turned into scions as they are genetically similar to the scion race, the one known as Gura Kanata her genetic makeup is different from that of the scions. The dragonized glowed Bulma looked on in confusion for a second she screamed as her physiological structure started to rewrite, before Vegeta could go to his wife say both he and Goku vanished. It is done farewell. Thanks for listening and remember the disrespect is real goodbye.